Hello guys, this is Cosmo and welcome back to SnowRunner. Now for today, uh, we will be picking up the P16 from Drummond Island. Uh, we are starting out from uh, Smithsville Dam. I'm gonna take you guys on this little hike on the shortcut so we don't go all the way around on the highway around the mountain. Just so we'll have some extra fun and uh, highlight the CK1500, which we haven't been using in a fair bit now. And uh, I felt it was like a bit of a shame. Plus it would, uh, it would contrast a bit since we've just been uh, in so many big trucks in the last few episodes. It'd be nice to uh, head back down to uh, some of the smaller trucks available in the game. Now, um, on uh, this, this is the last time I actually seen the CK1500, we've done a few things to it. I already mentioned some of these in the last episodes, but uh, it now has uh, chain tires. We unlock these at level 11, and I'm putting them to good use. It makes no real difference in uh, non ice conditions. However, when. I mean, they're just as good as the mud tires, so there's no real use not to have them instead of the mud tires. Uh, we also remove the um, off-road suspension, the snow rudder suspension, the, sorry, not suspension, uh, gearbox. Uh, for the pure sake of uh, fuel efficiency, fuel efficiency has been a problem with this truck. And I had the option of uh, using the off-road gearbox with um, those god rays. So using the off-road suspension with uh, a lower engine, with the 5.0 non-custom engine, which uh, would have been okay and fine, I mean. However, uh, I mean, we're not, we're not doing any pulling with this truck, so that was, you know, yeah, maybe that's, that makes sense. However, um, as we found out in, you know, our experience, in my experience with uh, the last episodes, uh, pulling strength matters probably more than actual off-road extra specific capabilities. So uh, even when you're not pulling things, uh, you may still want to have a lot, lot of uh, horsepower in the trunk. So, um under the hood and I think we have, whoever has their engines in the trunk we're not talking any fancy sporting cars here so <laughs> get, getting back to it a lot of horsepower so having that poor horsepower uh, I would be sticking with uh, 5.2 and that means that I have to get that fuel efficiency out somewhere and that's gonna be the gearbox so we haven't been specifically needing any low ranges on this truck where I mean we haven't been in situations where we really need to shift that low as much. It's a light truck, it, and we don't carry loads with it. It just doesn't uh, doesn't have the same requirement that we've seen, for example, in uh, the last episode, the Fleet Star, right? Where the off-road suspension helps a lot. It, there's a huge difference between, you know, I'm not moving at all with the low plus gear, and I'm not moving at all with the low gear, but I am moving with uh, the low um, minus gear. You know the low low gear so I can see the use for that but when we're talking uh, the scout you know just uh, going from point A to point B without anything else um, it makes sense to stick to the gearbox that offers me the best uh, fuel efficiency um, the highway one might have been an option to be super fair I mean if the highway one adds extra high gears and uh, I think handles auto a bit better, but um, I kind of fear we'll be going too fast. I mean, with non-road tires on road, we can end up, you know, like six out of the six out gear, and we have issues. We'll be sliding all over the place. I mean, you know, in this situation, we, it'd be nice if we had like a little lower low gear, or I know, with the off-road suspension, I think even in that case, the low gear becomes slightly lower in terms of torque. But um, these uh, situations are more or less rare enough where where we will be taking the Chevrolet anyway. I mean, 
bit much. I think the the best thing about I mean, why would you would use a scout truck instead of using like an off-road truck for your scouting, which we have seen before works uh, well enough, is uh, because of the autonomous scout winch. Uh, the autonomous scout winch more or less guarantees that if you do tip over, it's almost a non-issue. You, if you have you know a tree to flip yourself over with, yeah, that's that's just that, that's it. That's solved. That removes like 60%, 80% of the worry of scouting new conditions and new terrain. You can take more risks uh, once you have that autonomous scout witch. Um, however, not all uh, small trucks, well, scout trucks are the same. Uh, I've noticed this because I've you know actually started buying some of the other scout trucks just to see the options they have. Um, I don't remember the name right now, but I think the International Loadstar. International Lowstar uh, is pretty unique because it can mount like a full service trailer on its back. Well, not a full, but you know, a scout style service trailer on its bed. So basically, you have like a dedicated car for repairing. And more importantly, like the International Lowstar actually has the ability to mount the, the, the crane, the, um, the loading crane, the small yellow loading crane, which is absolutely amazing and fantastic. You know, on Having a loading crane on that small of a form factor uh, means you can you know just have like a semi trailer uh, truck, and then just have um, uh, you know a small scout truck that does the loading, which is really pretty interesting and would remove some of the weight from the main tr uh, truck which carries the load. Uh, either way, I have one of those just in a bright red color. I haven't used it. Uh, on uh, recordings yet because there was no real use for it. And the only thing I actually used it for something off screen once or twice. But uh, if there ever is a situation where we will need some remote repair or you know remote refueling because it comes stock with 130 liters, so we can only siphon gas off from it if we really need to, we would be uh, taking that out. I haven't had a, had a look at the other available scout trucks. I mean, we all know the Khan Marshall DLC truck, which is more or less an off-road monster. I mean, even more than this is. Uh, it has ridiculously huge tires. You can get anywhere, go through any mud. It's really, really, really silly. Um, the scout 800, I hadn't have a, had a look at uh, what it comes with, but it just seems like a very, very light variant of... Uh, this uh, Chevrolet CK1500. Again, we haven't, we have not had much use for scout trucks, you know, a fair bit of time, just because, uh, as we mentioned earlier, um, as long as you're careful and you don't tip over, you have a much better success rate with some of the bigger tanks of gas. Um, bigger tank of gas uh, trucks. I mean, it's totally a thing if you want to get uh, like a scout truck and put uh, an oil trailer on it, but for me that kind of ruins the whole concept of uh, uh, mountain goating uh, across uh, mountain peaks. I mean, just uh, remove some of the interesting part of it. Uh, that is the Drummond Island Pass, but we will be heading uh, back to the trailer store just to uh, fuel. I'm kind of happy with 40 liters of uh, gas usage for uh, what we did up until now. Maybe I just got used to the usage of the ridiculous uh, scout trucks. Uh, sorry, off-road trucks. Okay, let's uh, get this fuel carrier on. Let's get C and let's get sorry. Let's get V. Let's get the fuel. Okay. We still have. Uh, oh, sorry about the yawn, guys. We still have uh, 40 liters up in the small roof rack, but we don't care about that. Uh, let's sell this out. Let's head back and let's go to Drummond Island. Again, Drummond Island is our more or less the only map I think which we haven't uh, fully unlocked. We still have one watchtower there, 
which uh, actually hides, if I'm mistaken, the P16 recover bolt truck, as well as its uh, upgrade because I think it has an engine upgrade or something on that island. And also, if I'm not mistaken, hides the single fuel station outside of Spinsville Dam and whatever Black River. Let's mark this down because I actually don't know this map almost at all. Uh, okay, this is probably a bridge we have to construct. But we can totally... I mean, this seems totally truckable. And we'll just see how we get this watchtower here. The reason why I'm rushing uh, the P16 and uh, its upgrade is because we really kind of need uh, a big truck, uh, something very very powerful to handle some of the big loads we are all going to be taking on, uh, just taking on that construction trailer. Again, construction rig trailer, we did it the first time uh, with the Fleet Star and that was barely barely enough, uh, and I don't want to put myself in that situation again. It's also the matter of it had too small of a wheelbase, I mean not wheelbase, sorry, wheel size, uh, and with the suspension and everything basically you can end up, end up in situations where your front wheels are not touching the ground, so you had zero steering and while hawking around the, that whatever 3, 4, how many tons it has behemoth, it became really, really hard. So, um, for sure, I want to get into a heavy truck, and I already have the P12 bot, as I mentioned in a previous episode, but I just want to do a side-by-side -side comparison between the P12 and the P16. I, I kind of know the general gist of what's the difference between those two trucks, but I just want to, you know, get the feel for them, handle them a bit, uh, see, the, see their upgrades, maybe there's some difference in upgrades in regards to wheel sizes or something. Plus, having those uh, heavy trucks would uh, open up some opportunities for us. Uh, some ridiculous opportunities, like utterly crossing, uh, fording a river where we shouldn't be fording rivers and stuff like that. Plus, it'd be nice just to get uh, some extra... Um, just some new faces, new trucks in this series. I. I think maybe you guys are getting tired of seeing the same uh, trucks over and over again. I'm not getting tired uh, of uh, using them. Somehow they're always uh, interesting. But uh, maybe it'd be nice just to get something else. sure whether there was an update or something um, regarding a differential lock. Oh, well, this is some deep mud. Um, because we've started seeing some uh, differential uh, lock, differential actually warning, uh, coming out quite a fair bit more than uh, we are, uh, well, than we have ever seen. So I'm wondering whether they did some uh, things under the hood to the. Um, physics and maybe to the way the differential reacts. Either 
it, this is what I was uh, mentioning about, like, um, even in this terrain, which is, isn't really all that bad of a terrain, it's just some medium mucky terrain, let's say, I don't know, maybe medium high, you know, probably medium, um, even through this terrain, we're having issues just uh, making speed with uh, these small trucks, so, uh, I mean, this for sure would be more of an off-road truck kind of deal more power in you know a light package uh, these scout trucks are better if you're discussing them purely as scouting trucks um, in situations where you know you had some very cramped very uh, tight turns on you know like tiny mountain passes more than uh, dealing with this horrible straight up uh, muck where you need the horsepower, you need those big tires, and you need um, maybe even that, maybe even that weight, the extra weight to put the pressure down on the ground. Oh crap! We can't cross through here. Oh yeah, the bridge, the bridge is half built. Oh crap! I kind of wish they would just leave these empty. Because it makes my job harder, maybe even impossible. Eesh. Okay, let's let's get this a shot. Maybe we can get through. Although if we tip over, it'd be pretty bad because we there's just like almost no trees here. Do we have any available attachment points? Okay, there's like one or two. Let's hope those will be enough. Okay, let's take it easy camera freaking out as it always used to do around these uh, bridges half built bridges okay let's do this let's try climbing through here i, I kind of wish that this would not be here in any way shape or form because it doesn't help me one bit i mean kind of Oh no, please don't tell me. Yeah, okay, fine. We're getting stuck under the... Under the bridge itself, under the bridge model. Yeah, there we go. That's exactly what I was worrying about. Okay. Come on, you can do it. Come on. Come on. Okay, that's not happening. Do we have anything ahead of us that we can grapple to. I don't think so, right? Okay, uh, then let's do something really freaky. Let's see if we can... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Not what I wanted. Uh, this doesn't look very realistic now, does it? And again, all of this was done just because of these very silly blocking points here. I mean, we can totally go back and try. Yeah, we should probably do that. Let's uh, head back and use... Just climb on these rocks. much okay no what are you even winching to I have absolutely no idea probably some dead tree or something yeah okay this is totally not okay okay of course engine has stalled that's fine This is, this is like 100% off-road techniques, I guarantee you guys, it's 100% real off-road techniques. This is how the professionals do it in the real life. Okay, 
Uh, okay, I kind of hoped more more tipping, but that wasn't the thing. Okay, let's see if we can straighten ourselves out a bit. It's a good thing we had just the range to get there. No! Room, totally off-road techniques. Totally real off-road techniques. Uh, now we just need to write ourselves up. Okay, that didn't specifically work. I'm kind of worried that we are... Let's get closer if we can. Upright. Upright. There we go. Amazing. It's the kind of machine guns where, you know, a scout trucks scout truck would shine in just here and now but you know we kind of need wouldn't need to do it in the first place if we had some stupid didn't have actually that stupid stupid um, bridge problem there either way let's head over to that trailer sorry that uh, refueling station sure we're gonna have a ta task in the future to take that super heavy tanker somewhere but we'll see okay that was that uh, let's head through here let's head through here let's get that watchtower solved and done so we have access to um, the area as well as where our prized B-16 is. here okay that's nice um, a little note because I didn't mention the international low star earlier that uh, vehicle comes with permanent all-wheel drive on at all times and also comes with permanent uh, differential lock on at all times which is pretty cool uh, maybe, uh, again, I I would be using it more, I mean, right now instead of this, but it doesn't have the race suspension, sadly, so that means uh, small tires and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, issues with clearance. Okay. mess up where that should be no I think it's here just we haven't it's ever so slightly out of the watchtower range I think so let's uh, do this and there should be another upgrade unless we already took it I don't think so I'll uh, consult my um, <laughs> sources uh, in the meanwhile. But uh, let's just get let's just get the truck first and foremost. Sure. It's a 
good thing they're putting bridges over these uh, barely even streams, but uh, they're not uh, putting bridges over those big chasms. Slab? Yeah, I think that's a concrete slab in it. You know, most of these trailers aren't put out here for nothing, right? Most of them actually do... Okay. Most of them actually can be chained if you're smart enough. And you actually look at all your options and all of your tasks and everything. Uh, like, you know, last episode where you could have uh, dragged some fuel, tra extra fuel, up to one of the stations there. That would have gotten us, uh, you know, minus one trip that we have to do in the future. However, I will say that, uh, I don't know if you guys remembered, but we had uh, trailer there with uh, two wooden uh, metal beams which is the exact perfect right number we need for the half step in one of the future uh, contracts so I, I hold that off screen it was unexciting but uh, just goes to show that these are tied in together somehow, and uh, as long as you can manage the fuel and stay in the in the spot, in the general area where you have, uh, you need to do the um, the job, and have the foresight to bring whatever you need, trailer wise or saddle or something, on the truck, uh, you can uh, significantly exped expedient. Expediency. Ex something, something. You can make it uh, a lot more efficient and waste less time moving from place A to place B. Okay, P16 discovered. P16 is available for purchase. Uh, is this ours now? No, this actually just unlocks it for purchase. Huh, interesting. I kind of thought we would actually really get it. Well, shouldn't it be a huge deal. Oh, actually, let's try now. Oh, there we go. So yeah, we did get it. This is the Pacific. Wow, huge ass truck. Pacific P16. And it's fully fueled up and ready to go for us. That's nice. Um, we'll just actually leave this here for the moment. Uh, let's turn off the engine. Uh, let me consult my sources and I'll be back in two shakes. Okay, the look up on my sources, and we already had this unlocked, we just didn't see it. Um, this, we have to get that done. Honestly, we should have done it on, on our way here, uh, because we passed right past it, but I just didn't, uh, honestly, just didn't see it. Uh, so, we will be... Heading back there. And grabbing that. Let's also go through here and unlock this trailer. I'm not sure if this is affordable water. Let's check it out. Uh, this may be a bit deep, to be honest. Totally, totally deep, totally something we don't, don't want to... ...be in. Okay, so we're taking the long way around. Uh, 
uh, we are leaving that species thing here instead of recovering it because uh, I'm gonna just check out if there's anything we can do with it given that it's already there physically placed oh we have to go back that horrible bridge don't we that's terrible okay let's um let's go around we don't want to spend another 15 minutes futzing around there do we might as well unlock the xp for uh, that trailer on our way and also just get this uh, train uh, unlocked and i think this is entirely affordable should be Anyways, we'll, uh, we'll just see where we end up. But yeah, that's the P16. Um, I think... Hmm. You know what, guys? Let's do this, because this uh, might not be too interesting for you guys to see. Let's... Uh Let's just, yeah, let's just re uh, get the P16 back uh, to the garage and because I didn't want to do this uh, with you guys on screen. Uh, let's recover this, yes. Okay, so we have the... P16 here. Let's store this. Let's uh, get put it down here. Let's go to customize. Uh, they all have special. They have any raised. Yep. Oh, only one of the tires. Okay. Extended heavy. Doesn't really matter. Free high saddle. Oh, so it came without the saddle. Okay. And the stock air filter, which does definitely need a snorkel. Anyways, um, let's just have a look. So the P12 has an advanced special option uh, gearbox, which is in Alaska to unlock, but still, uh, it has a wider variety of tires. So it can, let's just check, this can only fit Oh, this also has an advanced suspension, sure. This can only fit off-road 57-inch OHDs, right? So OHD was the, um, the double ones for highways. Okay. And this one can fit all-terrain off-road mud tires and chains. So for sure, this is the better truck if you're going to be looking to, uh, to the future. Um, okay. Uh, same winch options here. A spare wheel option, which I don't, I don't think this has, right? Right. And, oh, actually this can fit heavy crane, large uh, maintenance frame on fuel tank, aside from just the saddle high. So this is a, a lot more versatile of a truck. So let's just check uh, the pure stats. It's a part weight B. With a fuel consumption of B minus, and this is a B with a B minus. Okay, identical fuel capacity 300 versus 350, right? Yeah, I got it. So uh, pretty much the P12 is the better truck between between these two, uh, just through the matter of how not exactly accessible it is, but uh, how much it can be upgraded. Hmm. So yeah, I guess were we to have not had the cash to buy it and had this just just this as a free truck, uh, we would probably be sticking with this. But given that we do have both of the both of them and the option to actually purchase both of them, uh, we would be outright uh, just uh, selling this, selling the P16. I mean, it looks a bit squatter, I guess. So maybe it tips over ever so slightly less, but I know with the top mounted um, 
whatever that is, walkway. Maybe, just maybe, it's roughly the same thing. But either way, uh, this is the truck we will be staying with in the future, just because it's upgradability. So uh, let's uh, sell this. So this is 15,000 something something. And whatever war we want to sell, this, this is hmm, 14, 145, it's actually cheaper. I don't know. Uh, actually, do you know what? Let's, uh, if we're gonna be doing this uh, comparison side by side, let's uh, look at the engines. I didn't look at the engine options, but I think they were identical. So, P16. Okay, so engine options. This goes from my A2V 780, 850, and M900 Westline V12. Yeah, they have the exact same uh, same options, and so the P12 with the max engine would be like an A minus and a C plus. Uh, a minus and a C plus. Yeah, they're more or less identical, considering upgrades. So yeah, uh, we're just gonna be selling the P60. There we go. And yeah, uh, this is the International Lowest Drivers mentioned earlier, that's our dedicated uh, ridiculous truck for servicing. And anyway, uh, this episode has been going on a bit over long. I know I promised you guys also get going to get that upgrade, but uh, considering it's, well, nowhere interesting, we will just be uh, grabbing it off screen. Uh, global map, Smithville, Smithville, yeah, Smithville, no, not Smithville. Uh, drowned. Anyways, uh, that's it for the episode for today. Uh, I was hoping it'd be more exciting, but oh well. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. Uh, we are putting out these episodes uh, daily. Well, I say we, but <laughs> it's just me. We're uh, putting out these episodes daily and... I hope you guys enjoy them. I will uh, see you guys in the next one.